Hi everyone, I am back and I have been making a few videos about all of the hand knit patterns that I've released. And so this is my final one for today. It is going to be the Brioche Bubble Crew, which is one of my favorite patterns, even though it's a solid color. So let me put it on and I'm excited to talk to you about it. All right, here we go. Here she is. This is the Brioche Bubble Crew. Let me just go twirl. So as you can see, this sweater has a sort of slightly short, but definitely boxy, slightly dropped shoulder look. It's supposed to be the fit of your favorite vintage store find sweatshirt, but in sweater form. And then the sleeve is pretty straight. There's a tiny bit of shaping, pretty straight, but then it just bubbles in and then it has a very beautiful taper to the cuff. This lighting is really highlighting the decadence of this yarn, which is a few yarns held together, just two. So it is a mohair, like a kid mohair silk type of very fine yarn held with, I'd say like a sort of light sport weight yarn. So you're running those two yarns together and when picking yarns, I recommend picking yarns that are sort of not the exact same color because then it gives you like extreme highs and lows with, not extreme, but you know, highs and lows within the yarns. And the reason that that's fun is because the mohair, actually, I'm going to zoom in for this. And by zoom in, my version is just come closer. Okay, so can you see, let's move my hair. Can you see the beautiful mohair halo? That mohair halo, if it's like a slightly lighter color, makes the sweater glow. Like it's a full, you know, like a light experience with the yarn. What am I trying to say? It's sort of like, you know, like a Renaissance painting that really celebrates a light source. That's what this sweater is. It has that sort of uh, internal glow about it, I think. So when picking yarns, it's fun to pick sort of slightly off tone where the mohair is maybe slightly lighter than that base sport weight yarn. And I actually picked for my like kind of light sport weight yarn, I picked a yarn that ha that was a sock yarn actually because I liked that it had a really tiny amount of nylon in it, which meant that it was going to really hold itself and not grow too much and also less likely to shrink. So both of those things were sort of a cool thing. So let's get into how it's made. You cast on along the back neck and you create this shaping. So beautiful. I know I mentioned this in another video, but the way that the brioche stitch just like buds off itself as you're shaping is so beautiful and really beautiful on the back shoulder. Then you knit the rest of the top back to the underarm. Then you grow on the front shoulders join at the front neck, continue flat until the underarm. And then you join in the round and you go around, 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 and you finally cast off at the bottom using a technique I had actually never used before called an Italian bind off. It's a bind off that has, let's zoom in again. It has the look of being a tubular 
find off. But it's done with a darning needle and the yarns. So therefore, it's sort of considered a woven bind off. And I like it because it really holds its shape. And so if the rib isn't perfectly drawing it in at the bottom, let's step up again. Then the Italian bind off does sort of suck it in at the bottom and give it that real sort of vintagey sweatshirt shape. So that's the techniques. This pattern is really good for beginners at brioche because it allows you to learn how to do brioche flat at the top, back and forth. And then you also learn how to do brioche in the round, which unlike other techniques is sort of completely different in a way because the way that you bring the yarn around and over, it's just a little bit different. So that's sort of a fun learning. I like this sweater because when you knit a garment from the top down, it allows you to try it on along the way. So you could put your little bib on because, you know, you just knit the little top and you could keep trying it on until it's the length that you want it to be. So I love that. And then the same thing with the sleeve where you grow it on, but you can keep trying it on and then finally make decisions about the length based on your try on, which I think is important. It's just in the sewing world, like the hand sewing community, there's all sorts of stuff about people modifying fits. And I sometimes feel like the hand knitting community doesn't feel as able to do that because there's a lot more like math involved and therefore it's harder to sort of decode what's happening or what mods you need to make. So by being able to try it on along the way, it will help. But one little disclaimer that I would really like to mention here is that brioche does weird stuff when you block it. So I highly recommend, basically, like, please, I'm begging you to make a gauge swatch. I know that people don't enjoy making gauge swatches, but I hope that you can just... Actually, I'll tell you how I feel about it. When I endeavor to do a knitting project, I'm sort of always intimidated by the thing I'm about to make. And... I see making a gauge swatch as that sort of like inhale, take a deep breath moment while you gather the courage to then embark on the journey. So please take that deep breath and then make the gauge swatch and you'll be good because when you block brioche, weird stuff happens, it gets way wider. So you might feel like as you're knitting this garment, it's narrow. But I promise you, if you made a gauge swatch, you'll know that it expands and you'll be able to plan for that. The worst thing you could do is not, and then the sweater doesn't fit you, and was that really worth it? So that's just, you know, me being mom for a minute, but highly recommend block it, make a gauge swatch. What else? That's sort of it for this pattern. I think that in fun colors, this pattern is just the most wearable. I'll probably do a cardigan version of this in the near future because it's so easy to wear. Oh yeah, fit stuff. Okay. I know I've been saying this in every video, but garments fitting as many bodies as possible is so important to me. If you feel that the garment works for your style and works for your gender identity or just you love the look and feel, I want that garment to then fit you. So besides the fact that I have designed this garment to have ease so that, you know, you can have different body shapes, I also just have a huge interest in uh, being able to manipulate this pattern for you. So if you look at the spec page of this garment and you say, I sort of am outside of the range of the specs of the garment, please reach out 
because whether you would like the garment to be smaller or bigger for your body, I am happy to greet it for you. It would be my greatest pleasure. You're not alone. And I would love to make sure that you will be able to knit and wear this garment. So please do reach out because again, it's just sort of the most important thing to me is that my work will fit you when you knit it. All right, I'm gonna do a final twirl for you. So again, this is the Brioche Bubble Crew. And it is available on Ravelry. It's also available on my web store. And I hope that you'll consider knitting it.